Kevin likes to do everything very live. Yeah. You know, you, you go and you play the track, then maybe you have an overdub or two, and then that's it. And yeah. uh, it makes it quick. But is that is that pretty much how you you like to record as well, or is it? I do like the band to play together if they possibly can. There's just communication that happens that way. You know, it's just it's done. You know, um, but not everybody can do that. You know, there's a. I mean, a lot of our stuff, a lot of things get replaced. You know, we sadly are really just kind of getting the drums. You know. Um. Yeah. So you're saying about the. Uh, <clears throat> you're saying about the overdubs being an inspired idea. Yeah, having a bunch of people at once. I mean, that's what you did in the four track days. You know, if you see like that, all you need is love clip. You know, they're. Truly, they're all doing something into a feed to the bounce, you know, of the four tracks, and that's really cool. But you know, usually you don't do that if you don't have to. But again, it's sort of inspiring to be playing with other people, and uh, I mean, it's fantastic. I love the way Kevin works. I mean, he's just very uh, chill, but he's saying things that are like, "Yep, that's a great idea," and we do it. And I mean, I just love the speed of it because um, for me, the whole thing is to not you know, lose the magic, so to speak. I mean, you know, when you hear a song and you hear it sounding like the record kind of fast, it cheers everybody up, you know? And there was such a mentality, like in the 80s, of this incredible slog way of working, and, you know, and I just don't think you have to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you've obviously known John for a while now, and you've worked with him a fair bit. Um, so, is it, is it odd for you to come into a session and there's someone else, that, you know, who's got the reign, so to speak, and Oh, I love it. I mean, I like recording, I like doing that job, but I also like playing guitar and just being the guitar player. That's so cushy, you know. I love it. And, you know, obviously we had um, we had Kenny in here and we had Anton and they had to leave for whatever reason, so we had a little bit of a, a change up in the, um, in the, in the band, but yeah. is it, is it odd to come in and fill someone else's shoes in a way, or is it just, you know, I just don't session? think about it. I mean, I think the the weird thing for me is to look back over doing this forever and thinking about how much it's kind of always the same. Like musicians are sort of, they're a type, you know, and there's a kind of thing that happens and it, it's really similar, you know, at all levels and stuff. I mean, the difference here is just that these guys are super great and I'm, you know, honored to be in the room with them and I'm impressed they didn't open that trap door that I'm sure is what's under this rug. But, you know, I mean, aside from that, as far as, you know, my feeling about it all is very comfortable and just like, yeah, let's rock, you know, it, it's weird how that happens. Because I'm like totally awkward in all situations, except this one, you know, <laughs> and, and this just feels right, you know, every time and I didn't know these people before, you know, and it's just fun. Yeah, I mean, it certainly looks like you were having a lot of fun. Um, and it's, in a way, you're playing catch up because there were nine tracks in when you came in. So you don't, you don't want to drop the ball in any way, and you don't want to miss a beat. So. Well, probably a good thing I didn't hear, you know, the other guy because I probably would have thought, um, well, actually, I kind of don't really play guitar anymore. You know, I'm sure he was probably an unbelievable guitar player, but I didn't hear those tracks, and I just didn't even think about it. You just, just go for it. You know? That's great. Um, I mean, in terms of John's writing style. Um, as you've seen this to Michael before, how has that developed um, or, or has it stayed the same pretty much? You know, his lyrics are, are very dark. I, I find mean, them very dark. So yeah, they're... well, I think there's a real thread back to the first stuff that I worked on of his, which, you know, was a long time ago now. It was like around 1990, I guess, you know. But, um, you know, the, the records are all different. And part of that is because John is so wonderfully agreeable about just letting them turn into something else, you know. Even though he's demoed most of these things, you know, and they've worked hard on the demos, they're very organized demos, he will just come in here and just let it go somewhere else, and he's cool with that, which is great. It's really hard to let go of something, you know, that you've worked up. But I think he gets the most out of the situation by, by being like that, you know. And, and so I, I think with these different casts of players and eras of recording and everything, it does kind of evolve. But I think there is a uh, kind of a thematic thing that's that's there that's sort of his thing and there's a kind of you know there, there's always a bit of hearkening back in some of these songs a lot of you know 60s-isms and stuff you know, that's that tends to be there but not in a real strict formalistic sort of way you know it's just a hint and um, yeah I mean Kevin was quite quick uh, even on the first day um, to, to find the style of where he wanted this to go and he was talking about the Beatles and he was talking about uh, everybody being 15 or 16 years old and playing like that. 
I mean, was that easy for you to follow that direction or? That's all I can do. I mean, I'm really not like one of these guitar players that plays on like TV commercials. You know, that whole thing of like rock music that's really for commerce is creepy as hell. You know, it's like it's, I mean, I really like rock music. I don't want it to get killed by these weird, perfect versions of it that are used for other things. And, you know, I, my favorite era of recording was when it was like, that was the attitude. I mean, partly because the music was just for kids and played by kids, but even so, they kind of, there was an appreciation of it, you know. Uh, but I think in the 70s and, and on into the 80s, there was a real idea of perfecting it, you know, like making it slicker and therefore it's gonna sell more. And sometimes that worked, but there's just you just know there's something dead about that, you know. And that's why people like Neil Young, you know, have these infinite careers and everybody respects that guy for just kind of making hit the kind of records he makes. I mean, that's what turns me on, that sort of attitude. You know? Attitude of freedom and playing sort of like kids do, you know. This is more interesting to me.